In this lecture, we're going to start examining the jail system. We'll begin by taking a very cursory look at the question, what is a jail? Followed by an overview of a breakdown of standard jail administration. And then given the fact that we have the nation's largest jail system right here in our own backyard, we're going to take a look at some changes and approaches that have occurred in the Los Angeles County jail system over the last several years um, with specific attention to the concepts of what is our overall goal? What are our main um, desires with our county jail system? Is it simply to punish? Um, is it also to treat? Um, or sort of throwing in this third category, are we also there to refer our inmates to the appropriate type of community-based programs for treatment and or punishment? There, there are various sources um, and facts and figures presented throughout this lecture. So down here at the bottom, there's a list of several of the, the main sources um, where several of those facts and figures were pulled from. So let's go ahead and get started. So what is a jail? A jail in its classic sense is supposed to be a facility for holding individuals for a short period of time. And when I mean a short period of time, I mean anything from a couple days to a couple months and ideally no longer than a year. Um, so in the, the classic definition of a jail is a facility to hold pretrial detainees, sentenced misdemeanors, and individuals convicted of felonies. And you'll notice that I have an asterisk next to felonies because when prison space is unavailable, jails are often used to sort of catch that overflow and hold even individuals who are of a, a higher level or a harsher level of, of criminal. Um, and one of the things that we'll be noticing going forward in this class is in the last 10 years, especially here in California, we've seen a drastic change where our jails aren't really being used as much to hold simply pretrial detainees and and people convicted of misdemeanors serving short periods of time, but rather we are seeing an influx of individuals who have been convicted of felonies serving their actual felony sentence in a county jail. And you can start to imagine that this will create issues. One is because jails are designed for short-term confinement. And somebody who's been sentenced for a felony is usually serving more than a year in, in prison, but if we're holding those individuals and having them serve their time in jails, a question arises of whether or not we have the appropriate treatment, whether we have the appropriate care or the appropriately designed facilities for handling these higher level criminals. Um, and as I mentioned here in California, this has become very um, very important to us, especially over the last 10 years, with the emergence of Assembly Bill 109 or AB 109. And I don't want to get too far ahead of myself talking about that right now, but I want you to be familiar with this term called AB 109 because we'll be talking more and more about it as the course progresses. And you'll see the impact that it has had on our county and local jail system in, in an effort to alleviate, alleviate overcrowding at the state prison level. And jails historically are administered and run by counties. So if they're run by counties, that means that the law enforcement agency overseeing them is the, the county sheriff's department. We also have what I typically refer to as sort of mini jails. Uh, mini jails are lockups. Lockups are also known as things called holding tanks or drunk tanks. These are facilities designed to hold individuals for only overnight or up to two days, 48 hours. Um, so these types of facilities may be, you know, in almost any city, um, oftentimes even at large sporting venues or, you know, they'll have um, a lockup for, um, uh, you know, individuals or spectators who have gotten out of hand. And these facilities are typically administered by the local law enforcement agency of that jurisdiction or of that you know facility if it happens to be like a stadium or something like that. Um, so whereas you have jails like the county jails that are run by the county sheriff's department throughout that county in various cities you'll have lockups and those lockups will often be run and, and handled by the local police department of that particular city. 
Um, and the idea here is that if somebody can be held as the name drunk tank might imply, um, somebody may be picked up who is inebriated or under the influence and, you know, be um, booked into a lockup overnight in order to sort of sleep it off, sober up before they're released. Um, other individuals who have been arrested may be detained for a short period of time and then released from a lockup. Individuals who are facing more than 48 hours of confinement will then be transferred from a local lockup to a county jail um, to continue their processing. So let's talk a little bit about jail administration, who runs it, how they're run. So and once again, I'm going to sort of contrast the history versus the present. Historically, jails were designed for people awaiting trial or short-term punishment. This is what I alluded to on the previous slide. They're run by law enforcement, typically the county sheriff's department. But currently, we've noticed that as our inmate population, our correctional population has expanded, where the jails are being forced to serve a much larger purpose within the correctional service, within the correctional system. They're not just a place to hold individuals while we wait for them to get processed and face trial, nor are they designed, or nor are we relying on them simply to hold individuals who have been punished for a misdemeanor and may be serving a sentence of a few months up to a single year. Um, what we're starting to see now is an expanded focus and sort of duties being placed on county jails where they're having to sort of meet several other correctional purposes. What do I mean by that? Well, as we'll be seeing in the lectures to come, we're seeing that jails are starting to be forced to house um, sentenced felons for sentences of one, two, or three years. Um, they're being, they're being forced to handle more and more individuals with substance abuse problems or mental illness. And therefore they have to find ways to incorporate treatment or therapy or things of that nature into their um, facilities. And these are facilities that were not designed for that. Um, and we see what are, why are jails starting to serve more of a correctional purpose? Well, especially here in California, I mentioned it previously, but AB 109, also known as realignment, that has been in place for approximately a decade now, um, has had a major impact on the county jails. Um, they're being forced to provide treatment. Um, they also do other um, various services for the correctional system, such as being the center for pre-sentence investigations, and oftentimes as being sort of a community service outlet um, for individuals who are sentenced to community service. Since jails are at the county level or administered at the county level, they are historically run by the county sheriff's department. Now let's take a little closer look at what's in our own backyard because we have sort of a, a perfect case study when we look at the Los Angeles County um, jail system. So Los Angeles County has seven official facilities, Men's Central Jail, the Twin Towers Correctional Facility, the Inmate Reception Center, the Century Regional Detention Center, as well as a few facilities up in Castaic, the North County Correctional Facility, the Pitches Descent Detention Centers, North and South. So these seven facilities make up the bulk of the Los Angeles County um, jail facilities and hold the vast majority of the jail population um, in Los Angeles County. Now, I start. I believe I started this lecture off by saying this, that we have, in Los Angeles County, we have the largest jail population in the country, almost twice second place, which is New York. Um, so we're, our jail population, I'll talk about the actual size here in a few minutes, um, but we have the largest jail population in the country, and this is out of over, close to 3,000 different jail jurisdictions in the U.S., so we're quote unquote number one in one area when it comes to comparing us against um, 2,850 jail jurisdictions across the US. The budget for the Los Angeles County jail system. In 2020, it was close to $1 billion was allocated um, out of the Sheriff's Department budget for maintaining and running the Los Angeles County jail system. 
the population. One of the things that we've seen, and we talk about overcrowding, and overcrowding often f makes its way into headlines when it talks about both prisons and jails. And yes, as you will see in a moment, our Los Angeles County jails are still overcrowded, but not as bad as they were when during sort of the emergence of the beginning of sort of the tough on crime era of the late 1980s. In the late, late 1980s, we saw the um, population, the daily population in our county jails balloon to approximately 23,000 inmates. Um, and there's stories of inmates being forced to sleep on the roof of facilities, in parking lots, on basketball courts, wherever they, wherever they could fit a body. Um, currently, we've seen a little bit of a reduction, but most of us would argue that it's still too high, um, especially given the capacity limits and the design of these various facilities. So currently, the day-to-day -day population within the Los Angeles County Jail System fluctuates between approximately 17,000 to 20,000 individuals on any given day. Um, for the last year or so, when I've checked numbers, usually it's in the 17s, but it has its spikes and its dips um, here and there. But as I started off this um, bullet point about population, even with a little bit of a reduction since you know the last several decades, almost all of the facilities are overcrowded. And if you look at the capacity design versus the actual headcount in any one of those seven facilities that we saw on the previous page, more often than not, every single one of those is going to be above capacity. Um, I think the only one that ever, the only outside um, sort of um, housing place for individuals within the Los Angeles County jail system is one or two of our fire camps, um, which sometimes aren't quite at capacity, but actually all of our actual brick and mortar facilities tend to be overcrowded. And the average length of stay for individuals within the Los Angeles County system is about two or is about two months. So the average length of stay is about 62 days for an individual entering jails within LA County. So what's the likelihood of, of going to jail if you're arrested within Los Angeles County? Well, as you can see with our first bullet point here, approximately one out of every three arrests results in somebody going to jail. So you have about a 36% chance of going to jail after an arrest. Um, what do the end of, if you find yourself arrested and going to jail, what do the demographics look like? in the jail relative to the general population. And if we look at this table that is here, we notice that although the population of Los Angeles County is approximately half white, we notice that they make up this arguably one of the smallest of the major racial or ethnic groups, one of the smallest percentages of the jail system at only 15%. Um, we, however, we do see a disproportionate number of black and Hispanic individuals locked up within our county jail system relative to their sort of reflection in the larger population. And for those of you who are keen with numbers, you may say, especially looking at the population, you may say those don't add up to 100. That's right, 40 plus 11 plus 45 does not add up to 100, it's more. The reason for that is because Hispanic is um, designated as an ethnicity. So somebody is either Hispanic or non-Hispanic, regardless of whether or not they're white, black, Asian, etc. So that's why we see some of these numbers that, that appear larger. But all that aside, all the statistical stuff aside, the key takeaway that, that is startling to me is the disproportionate representation of black and Hispanic individuals within our county jail system. Um, another thing that may surprise quite a few people is we look at, well, we think of jails once again as in its classic sense of being there for short-term confinement while you're awaiting trial or for somebody serving um, a short sentence for a misdemeanor conviction. Um, but even with those sort of starting points, we notice that close to half of the offenders in, in, on any given day um, housed within the Los Angeles County Jail System are actually there for a violent offense. Now, they may not have been convicted of that violent offense yet if they're awaiting trial, um, but Regardless, we notice that the jails are actually home to a um, more violent breed of criminal than many people might typically um, expect. And then what are people doing there? Like for the individuals who are housed on any given day in our Los Angeles County jail system, what are they doing there? Um, 
once again, a little bit less than half are awaiting either trial or sentencing. Okay, that's a, that's the classic approach of why we have jails and what they were designed to be there for. About 10%, give or take, are serving county jail time. So they've been sentenced to serve a sentence within the jail system. Once again, that's one of the classic approaches to the jail system and what it was designed to do. So these first two, awaiting trial or serving county jail time, are the classic reasons for having jails. Then we have those awaiting transfer to prison, 5%. Okay, not too much. There's always going to be a little bit of lag after somebody is sentenced before they are put onto a bus or put onto into a van and taken to um, a reception center as they begin their journey into prison. Held for parole or probation viola violations. Also, once again, not much of a, a deviation of the classic approach for jails. And we see a small percentage of about 7% um, percent of individuals are there for that reason. And then finally, we have what some scholars believe is a necessary change to the correctional system. Other people believe is an unnecessary sort of evil to that is sort of infesting the jail system. And as I said, we'll talk more about this um, later in the course. But there are about 15, 14 or 15 percent of individuals within the jail system that are have been sentenced to serve their time in jail under Assembly Bill 109. And to give a, a quick idea of this, what this typically means is these are individuals who have been convicted of a felony, uh, of a felony, and ideally should be serving their felony conviction within a state prison. However, due to overcrowding, these individuals are deemed to be non-serious enough that they have been sort of diverted into serving their felony sentence within the county jail system. And usually these felony sentences are anywhere from one to three years in length. Um, and this is a number that we've been keeping an eye on over the last decade to see whether or not this 14% this of individuals is going to have a significant impact on the culture and the dynamics that occur within the county jail system. So keep that sort of in the back of your mind because it's something that we'll be talking about in much more detail later. Now that we've seen a little bit about what jails are, how they're administered and run, um, as well as taking a look into what sort of the dynamics and the makeup of uh, the jails within Los Angeles County look like, let's go a little bit deeper and look a little bit um, into sort of the philosophy behind why do we have jails in the first place, and especially these these next several slides are going to go into sort of the debates that have been going on within Los Angeles County uh, regarding how do we sort of reform and update and revise our mission and our approach to using the facilities within the Los Angeles County jail system to best punish offenders as well as protect um, society. And the way that I've sort of, of captured is sort of this triad of, of three questions. Um, are our jails within Los Angeles County, are they there simply to punish offenders? Are they there to provide treatment to offenders? Or are they there almost as sort of a referral center um, in order to assist in referring inmates to the appropriate community-based services and organizations where they can either receive punishment or treatment within the larger community. And that's sort of been the, a big debate that's been going on, especially over the last five or six years or so within Los Angeles County. We have an ever-growing um, population of individuals in the county. Um, as we talked about, we have the largest um, jail population within the entire country. We have a very dynamic and diverse jail population. Um, we also have aging buildings and facilities. And when we think about money, where is that money going to go when we you know, look to the budget and as we move forward in Los Angeles County, what is the best path forward as far as using our jails in an effective manner? And that's where these questions come into play. And obviously the, the simple answer is going to be probably to say, well, we need to do all three. 
right? We need to have a certain component of punishing the, the individuals who need to be serving their time. We need to be providing treatment to those who are in need of it. And we should also make use of using the, the county jails as sort of a hub for connecting with community agencies who can also assist with punishment and treatment um, outside of, of the jail walls. And we think, why is that so important? Well, let's take a look at sort of three you know, and yes, these three areas are going to overlap, but sort of three unique categories of offenders that we need to deal with. First, we have to think about the offenders in, in general. And you saw on the uh, previous slide that approximately 45% of offenders in county jails um, are deemed violent. And here's a little bit more detail about that. About 45% of individuals are jailed for violent or serious offenses against persons, including aggravated assault, carjacking, child molestation, kidnapping, manslaughter, and rape. So some very serious um, crimes. So when we think about that, obviously we do have um, a certain certain degree, a large number of offenders who are either awaiting trial for violent or serious crimes or who have been convicted and are serving time for violent or serious crimes. We need to make sure our facilities have that ability to punish and incarcerate. But one of the things that we cannot forget is substance abuse. Um, and in fact, estimates put the number at about 65% of inmates within Los Angeles County would meet the criteria for what is known as a substance use disorder or a SUD. Um, so when you've got roughly two out of every three individuals within the jail system having an addiction problem, which may be sort of, uh, you know, run in line or correspond with their offending behavior or maybe sort of a cause of their offending behavior and is definitely going to be a barrier or a hurdle for them to get treatment or to get their life back on track and avoid criminal behavior. You can imagine that treatment is going to be something that is also going to be necessary simply by the numbers, whether or not somebody believes in using jails philosophically to treat substance abuse. One of the things we know here in Los Angeles County as well as many um, urban and metropolitan uh, jail systems or jurisdictions throughout the nation, you have a large percentage of individuals who have these problems and therefore you can't just ignore it. And then finally, um, especially here in Los Angeles as well as around the nation, around the world, but here in Los Angeles since we're talking about it, the problem with mental illness. Um, Estimates are between 30 to 35 percent of inmates within the county jail system suffer from a mental illness um, and some of them to a point where we question whether or not they're even mentally competent enough to stand trial. Um, and that raises another philosophical question of, is it right to house somebody or incarcerate somebody who is awaiting a, a trial that they're not even uh, physically or mentally fit um, to face? And from a study that came out a, a year or two ago, here's a quote, that Twin Towers is considered the nation's largest mental health institution, which is a pretty damning statement about um, the Los Angeles County jail system. Or is it just a recognition that we have, because we have so many inmates, and because the percentage of mental illness is one, roughly one out of every three inmates, that we are forced to be a mental health institution, where therefore, once again, that, that idea of the necessity of providing some form of either treatment or referral service is going to become part of sort of the mission and the duties of the LA County jail system. Um, according to a recent study um, released by RAND, approximately 61% of those in the mental health population do not need to be locked up. And this is going to go into the debate we're going to talk about in the next several slides, is arguing, well, okay, if 61% of those in the mental health population don't even need to be locked up, are there alternatives? Are there referral? Can we refer them to community-based organizations? And obviously, how do we do it with keeping in mind the what is best for the community, the safety of the citizens, but also making sure that we're doing things for that particular individual um, as humanely as possible. And this came from, you can see a reference right there. All right, so let's go a little bit deeper into this debate that's been stirring for the last five or six years as far as how do we spend our 
our valuable budget money um, to best move forward, forward within the Los Angeles County jail system. So in 2015, the LA County Board of Supervisors created the Office of Diversion and Reentry, the ODR. Um, and I expect you to be somewhat familiar with this, the Office of Diversion and Reentry. And I personally, this is just my personal point of view, was actually happy to see the LA County Board of Supervisors um, bring this into uh, effect, in, into place. Um, and so what is this Office of Diversion and Reentry? What's sort of their focus? Well, you can do, we'll talk a little bit more about them later, but just to give you a snapshot of what they're about. One of their main um, sort of goals is to identify, pull, and place eligible individuals from local jails into community programs. So rather than having individuals who are either not phys or either mentally fit or who have significant mental health or substance abuse or other issues, rather than having them serve their time in local jails, where they are not necessarily a threat to society, but they're also not necessarily getting the adequate treatment and services within the jails, maybe we can pull out individuals one by one and place them, find places within appropriate evidence-based community programs that provide evidence-based practices to help these individuals address the issues that they're facing. And this isn't just for individuals who are serving time. This is also for individuals awaiting trial. Um, for, as we'll talk about in the next lecture, individuals can often spend several months sitting in a jail awaiting trial. And that's valuable time where if somebody has a mental health issue or a substance abuse um, disorder, that they could be getting help. Um, and unless they're a s severe threat to society, there may be less expensive places within the community. And also we're benefiting those local programs and nonprofit agencies oftentimes within the community by referring individuals to them for treatment while they're awaiting trial or in lieu of spending time in jail for a um, misdemeanor or um, misdemeanor sentence. And the Office of Diversion and Reentry, one of the sort of three things that they sort of guiding principles, they believe that appropriate treatment can, one, make communities safer, two, break the cycle between jail and homelessness, and anyone living in or near Los Angeles County clearly um, cannot escape the rising number of homelessness and the issues faced by both citizens and the homeless citizens alike. And then finally, save the county money. Find ways to not have people locked up in a brick and mortar cell, but actually be referred out into the community. And maybe they'll be at a brick and mortar community facility, but it's oftentimes much less um, uh, costly than it would be to house individuals within the jail system. So after the ODR was created in 2015, we started to see this continued wave, this continued push for starting to recognize both the need as well as the philosophical want for treatment and referral services within our um, county jail system. Um, in 2018, a uh, little over $2 billion was was sort of earmarked for the consolidated uh, correctional treatment facility was planned to replace the LA Men's Central Jail. And the idea of this was the fact that the recognition that the Los Angeles Men's Central Jail is an old facility that definitely is in vast need of upgrades or just to be completely renovated or to build something new and tear that one down. Um, and the idea by earmarking this money for this new facility would be that this center um, this facility would be a center, would be a combination of both a clinic for treatment as well as a jail for housing and punishment. And the goal was to accommodate a growing number of mentally ill inmates. Um, as we saw in a previous slide, the number was currently pegged at about 30% of the total jail population, but also those individuals that need, were in need of substance abuse or medical treatment. And once you combine mental illness, medical needs, substance abuse needs, almost you know seven out of 10 inmates, 70% of all inmates face one or more of these different issues. And therefore the idea of this facility sounds great on paper is to let's combine clinic and jail have everything under one roof where we can do all three of those things punish treat refer everything in one place but let's see what the response was 
mixed feedback mixed feedback to the response for building this particular facility. And as we see with a, from a couple quotes on this um, slide, one from Kohler's 2018, you cannot just keep jailing people suffering from mental illness, not even if you build nice new shiny jails and call them treatment centers. So one of this idea is, is think back to what, what uh, Patrice is getting at here is, is the notion of it's still housing and jailing individuals and people, even if you call it treatment and you make it look clean and fancy, it's still holding people in this sense of confinement and incarceration. And there's that, that argument. There's also the argument that was brought forth by Dempsey in 2018 that which argued that speaking to individuals who suffer from mental illness argue that the vast majority of these individuals are not even going to qualify for a community bed. So although some individuals may come back and say, no, let's not lock up individuals who have mental health issues. Let's get them treatment in a community, more open, natural setting, more ecologically friendly, as opposed to a jail setting. Even if you want that, then you have to face the, the fact of, are these individuals qualified to be within the community? Are they um, too much of a threat to themselves to be in the community? Are they too much of a threat to others to be in the community? Do they have a history of behavior um, that, that excludes them from eligibility, right? So it's one thing to say on paper, it sounds good, but we have to think about the logistics. And that's where we see sort of the, the give and take of these two um, responses to the building of this new facility. And then before anything could even really get going, early 2019, the contract for the CCTF was canceled under pressure by social justice advocates who said that the treatment center would be a jail masquerading as a hospital and too massive to provide quality treatment. So we see that the argument of it, you know, of it simply being a jail masquerading as a hospital we had heard before. That was one thing, but also this argument that we can't, if, given the population of offenders within the Los Angeles County jail system, this argument was the idea of having everything under one roof. Um, our numbers are too large in order to get quality treatment. This is, this is going to be, you know, more like checking the boxes and you know, sending people through the line as opposed to getting the, the necessary one-on-one -on -one care that they really need. Um, and this has clearly always been an issue when it comes to the correctional system. One of the things that we'll be talking about are caseloads. If you talk to anyone who works in probation as a probation officer or parole as a parole officer, they'll tell you that, you know, they could possibly do their job much better if they didn't have such exorbitant caseloads, if they weren't responsible for 100, 120, 140 individuals on any given day. If they were only responsible for 20 or 40, yeah, they could do a much better job. And that we see that sort of that same argument within this idea of trying to combine both clinic and jail and treatment all within one facility. But efforts for a big, huge facility were not going to go away soon. And in fact, shortly after the CCTF was pulled from the table, we saw um, Councilwoman Sheila Kuhl um, come back with the comment of today, we begin to build a new and different future of health and justice for all county residents. What was she referring to that? She was talking about what the LA County Board of Supervisors had approved, which, which were unprecedented unprecedented, sorry, investments in treatment and diversion, and specifically for a mental health treatment center. So the argument here was, okay, well, if we don't want to have one, a, a one place, one stop sort of punishment, diversion, treatment, referral place, as we saw with the previous proposal, what if we just put in close to $2 billion for a mental health treatment center with, which is sort of removing sort of the, the jail component of it and more making it more of a large scale mental health treatment center. Um, and also we see around this time, and this is there's something else highlighted in this new bullet point that is a, a phrase, sometimes it's changed up, sometimes rather than saying treatment first, it says care first, jail last, but you'll probably see it and it's something you should be somewhat familiar with. So um, Supervisor Cool highlighted the additional spending to realize the goal of what they called treatment first, jail last for county residents who often repeatedly end up in jail for lack of mental health or substance use treatment. And so it was sort of flipping things on their head and the idea that we need to uh, 
approach these individuals as somebody who needs treatment as opposed to punishment. Punishment should come later. We need to treat them first. And this has become sort of a, a, a catchphrase and a slogan that has popped up in, in as or as either as treatment first, jail last, or care first, jail last, or some other iteration of it that you may become familiar. So the mental health treatment center. So here we were sort of saying, let's put our money not into a one-stop catch-all under one umbrella of jail and treatment and everything together. Rather, let's focus on building, let's focus just on the treatment, the care, um, the mental health treatment center. And one of the other things to sort of distance itself from law enforcement from the sheriff's department from sort of the philosophy of punishment or things that have often been tied in with the concept of the jail system was the argument was that this mental health treatment center would be staffed primarily by the la county department of health services rather than by the sheriff's department so once again it was sort of putting that stamp to say like look we not only is this going to be different it's not going to be jail it's going to be treatment and in order to sort of drive that point home, we're going to make sure that it's not being housed by sheriff's deputies and run by sheriff's deputies, at least in the large sense. Rather, it's going to be run by individuals from the Department of Health Services. And it would the idea of it was to include um, permanent housing um, that would be operated by ODR, the Office of Division and Reentry. Um, expanded support for diversion, so they would have opportunities for referring hand-picking individuals who are eligible for diversion or placement in other types of programs, as well as um, clearly the need for new treatment, bread, in new treatment beds, which would either be at the facility itself or would be sort of um, budgeted out in the community at various agencies or locations for individuals with serious mental health issues or significant health needs. So what happened to the mental health treatment center? Well, August 2019 comes by and the LA County Board of Supervisors once again changed course um, with feedback from the larger community. They decide to pull back on their efforts for either of the facilities and the LA County, LA County Board of Supervisors voted to cancel the proposal and instead chose to start focusing on diverting people into evidence-based alternatives to incarceration. So using the time, effort, and, and money or, or economic resources into diversion and the last thing on my sort of like triad of things that we see at the top of the slide, referring people to other sources more so than trying to tackle the, the balance of punishment and treatment all within the confines of the jail facilities. And we've seen a push towards that. And that started going, this push, using the ODR as sort of the backbone with their um, expertise since 2015 as far as identifying people, both the appropriate people to be placed into um, diversion or into community-based programs, as well as identifying the, the appropriate and um, qualified community services who could handle these inmates and these individuals coming out of the jails. So the ODR, working with the Board of Supervisors and others, started rolling in this direction. And then sure enough, early 2020, we see COVID. Um, and COVID kind of put everything, the brakes on it. And yes, we will talk more about the impact of, of COVID on both the jail and the prison system, obviously, since it's it's beyond timely for us um, and, and, and very tragic in many ways. Um, but for right now, we know that COVID sort of put a stop to discussions about the future of the LA County um, jail system. And most recently, there has been a growing push um, for Los Angeles County to participate in the California State Community Care Demonstration Project. And this is a call from the state trying to enlist counties to divert individuals who are incompetent to stand trial. Um, so to get these individuals, what I mean by divert, I mean get them out of the jail system and get them into hospitals, psychiatric hospitals, um, community-based clinics and treatment centers, whether it's for mental illness, whether it's for substance abuse, but especially for individuals who are incompetent to stand trial. And in fact, this has an acronym, it's called FISTS, um, short for Felons Incompetent to Stand Trial. 
um, and there has been a push. There's haven't heard much word lately as of the time of re recording this about um, the interest or whether or not the Board of Supervisors will pursue this approach, but it's something that I want all of us to sort of keep our eyes open for and see what counties are possibly signing up to and be involved with the community care demonstration project. Um, what are the outcomes if it you know comes to fruition? Uh, things of that nature. But the the simple sense of it within this project is to identify once again identify those individuals who fit this sort of this FIST acronym, and then pull them from our main our main population our main jail system, and then refer them to the appropriate agency or institution, um, whether where they can actually get the appropriate treatment and services needed, um, with a focus on that first as opposed to the focus on punishment first, as we classically have done, and that's where we're at in Los Angeles County right now. And it, it I think one of the things that this um, lecture I'm hoping will remind you is the interplay. We've talked about the correctional system being a system that is interconnected within itself, but also within the larger environment in the community. And we can see here in Los Angeles that a lot of this is very political. Um, the push of the ebb and the flow of what is the appropriate approach to how do we use, you know, that $890 million budget each year, do we use it for punishment? Do we earmark more for treatment? How do we find the appropriate balance? And it also speaks to the importance of our political system. As we can see throughout this entire lecture, you've seen the role that the LA County Board of Supervisors has played in proposing different changes, proposing different facilities, as well as rescinding and changing course. And a lot of this is part of the reaction, whether or not if we have citizens who come together and speak up and we speak our minds and work together, hopefully within Los Angeles County, we'll find the best outcome um, going forward. So I don't mean to get on a, a little, I don't know, pulpit of talking about the importance of, of voting and politics. So I will wrap it up for there and then we'll pick up with more of sort of the jail and pretrial experience um, as well as probation, other community-based corrections going forward. So take care.